All right. Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo. And if you've been following along for a while, you probably know every single Thursday we are here getting you set up with the best tips, tricks, and really diving deep into the foundational concepts of what makes Gig Performer super powerful. Uh, if you are watching right now, go ahead and let us know. Just post a comment. Be like, Hey, I'm tuning in from here. We'd love to hear uh, where you guys are watching from and uh, what you're up to. But as for me, tuning in from uh, New York City here and uh, really excited because this is actually the final week of our Build It with Gig Performer series. Um, <clears throat> I think it's been an important time because we have to think about the foundation and if we don't have a solid foundation there's not much else we can do to build upon it right if the foundation is not good we don't want to have a great starting point so these are the things that i believe that i think the gig performer team believes are what's going to set you up for the most success if you understand these foundational concepts using gig performer will go very well for you i've got a couple of people tuning in um welcome dan from yuma arizona so happy to have you here um thomas bishop excited to learn about device aliases today yes um i'm excited to talk about them um pierre tuning in i know we've got um jeff wheeler regular viewer we're so grateful for you jeff every week popping in saying hello um nathan number one to say hello welcome nathan um, we got some cool stuff coming up in the near future. Um, next week, we're going to be doing a full set list in one hour. Um, if you're wondering if it's possible, I am also. I'm just kidding. No, I know it's possible, um, but we're going to be using a lot of the concepts we talked about just in terms of saving favorites and saving layouts to really make that come to life. In the following week, we've got a uh, beta tester and gig performer community member who's going to be showing us how to use Ableton and gig performer simultaneously with OSC. Um, I got to meet with him the other day, just a brilliant and kind gentleman. Um, you've probably bumped into some of his resources on our uh, community page. Uh, his tag is Piano Paul, um, fantastic programmer, generous member. Uh, so if you're not a member of the community, make sure you pop in. And then, of course, at the end of this week's episode, we are going to be uh, sharing one feature that will be coming out in Gig Performer 4.5. So if you're a current Gig Performer 4 license holder, um, you will get this update for free um, at no extra cost. And um, it'll just show up when, when Gig Performer is released, which in the, in the next month or so, we're going to have that out for you guys. Um, I'm actually really, really pumped. This is one of my favorite things about what's coming up in Gig Performer 4.5. So after we talk about the rig manager, um, <clears throat> We will uh, we'll talk about that. All right, let's do it. Let's jump in. So I want to put on the screen right now. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Gig Performer. And this is actually one of our built-in templates. This is, um, I can't remember what this is called. I think this is Piano with Global Effects. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My son has a cold, um, which has uh, quickly transferred over to me. And so now I'm coughing live on YouTube as it goes. But we push forward. So we have talked about <clears throat> MIDI mapping before. And before I explain to you what the rig manager is and why, um, why it's important, I want to build a problem. I want to create a problem. So let's, let's build a problem. Here goes. <coughs> Excuse me, friends. We're going to enter edit mode. So Across the bottom, we've got all of these buttons that turn on our effects. So <clears throat> I am going to map them. Let's see here. <coughs> okay. So we are going to do this very easily by going into MIDI mode and choosing learn. And then I can hit a button. And this will map. So if I exit MIDI, uh, edit mode, and hit that button, you're going to see a toggle on and off. Let's keep going here. So I'm going to do the same thing with Tremolo. I'm going to map the second one. I'll do the same thing here. <coughs> okay, so what you can see is that for each of these devices, Gig Performer is saying, hey, 
the launch control is sending this message on this channel. And when you send that message, I'm going to adjust a particular parameter. Now, this is fantastic because it makes editing in Gig Performer or MIDI mapping in Gig Performer very fast and very efficient. <clears throat> Let's keep going, though. We want to really get ourselves into a bit of a problem here. So I want to map drive to a knob. <coughs> so we'll do that, and then we'll do tone right here. We'll do intensity. We'll do amount. We've got time. Okay. And right here. Fantastic. So what I've really done is, is pretty quickly, I've set up a way to toggle on everything, toggle it off. I can adjust these knobs and these faders, and I'm really good to go at this point, right? Like, Gig Performer is working, and as I turn these knobs and hit these buttons, I'm really in a good situation for live control. There is a problem, though, and the problem is, what if my keyboard or my controller stops working? What if I need to use a different set of gear for some reason? And that is exactly the problem that um, the rig manager tries to solve. It says, hey, this is a thing not only that could happen, but does happen. How do we fix the issue? So if I were to find myself in a position where my MIDI controller was no longer available or I needed to use backline gear, what I would have to do is I'd have to go in and individually map these. <clears throat> Even more than that, I would have to go in and do it for multiple rack spaces um, because I don't know about you, but very rarely am I performing with only four rack spaces. Let's check it out, friends. Welcome to the rig manager. <clears throat> I think the rig manager is fantastic. So what I've done is I've actually gone in and emptied out the rig manager, but it looks like maybe I didn't save it. Let's... Uh, for now, <clears throat> remove this. And what we get at the very beginning, you'll see here, is um, just a list, really, of everything that Gig Performer sees. So we see right here, um, an IAC driver, which is something I absolutely use. We see the Keylab 88, which is my keyboard that you can't actually see. It's off camera, but that is what I'm playing. My launch control, which you can see. We'll put that up on the screen quickly. Okay. And then I've got this local GP port, which is an advanced feature that I'm not at all going to talk about today. And then the M4, <clears throat> which is my audio interface that also has um, some MIDI capability. So Gig Performer <clears throat> is saying, hey, here are all of your devices. Friend, so sorry. Did a dry run <clears throat> without the scratchy throat. So what, what we got going on here is we are creating a way to tell Gig Performer, hey, this keyboard is here. And if it's not, use this one instead. So I'm going to start in the devices section. With this, uh, with the key lab. So I'm going to click, uh, triple click on here and I'm going to define an alias. Now, <clears throat> all alias means for those of you who are overwhelmed by that word, much like me, is another name. So I'm going to just call this at home key lab. So now Gig Performer has a name for this MIDI device and you'll see it's popped down here, right? So now it knows. This keyboard, which every time I hit it, it's it's dinging off here, is the at-home key lab. And I'm going to do the same thing for the launch control XL. I'm going to define an alias for this, and I'm going to call it the launch control. <clears throat> I'm going to call it the at-home launch control. There's actually a church I play at that uses a launch control, but the launch control sends different messages than my launch control. So the rig manager is actually the way I overcome that without having to bring my own with me. <clears throat> okay. 
Now, the next situation that we have set up here is the MIDI control aliases. So this, <clears throat> in my head, is almost the backwards of what we've just done, where we're going to come up with a name and then give it a location. So we're going to just start with a fader, right? And I'm going to call this F1 in my full um, rig manager file that I actually use. Um, I have everything labeled. So it's like 111213, F1, and then button one, button two for the whole thing. But actually, to illustrate the point most efficiently, we got to start from scratch. Got to go from zero. Okay, so here's F1. And let's do... Um, let's do the button since we did that. I'm going to do B for button dot one. Now you can name this whatever you want, right? It doesn't have to be these abbreviations. It's just that this really makes sense to my mind. So that's how I'm doing it. We'll do a couple more here. So I think I did four buttons. So we'll do button one, button two, button three, and button four. Fantastic. So right now, these are red. And what that's telling you is, hey, Gig Performer knows that these are things that are going to be used, but Gig Performer does not know where they are. So we want to fix that. So if we hit these triple dots, we can choose Learn MIDI Control. So for F1, I'm going to go in here and just move. Oh, I moved the wrong fader. Let's try that one more time. Learn. Oops. Um, right here. Move fader one. Okay, so now Gig Performer knows that whenever it receives from my at-home launch control controller 77, channel 1, it's fader 1. And this is important because what Gig Performer has done is it has made fader 1 more important than the actual MIDI CC. You'll see how this pans out in a second. So button 1, let's learn this MIDI control. You'll see learning, right? Button 1. Here, learn MIDI control, button two, learn MIDI control, button three, learn MIDI control, button four. Fantastic. And I think we also need some knobs. Are you guys catching this? If, if you're with me so far, let me know in the comments. Brett, I'm with you. If you're getting value out of this or you're beginning to connect the dots, make sure you hit that like button so more people can hear about Gig Performer. So <clears throat> let's do a couple of knobs here. So I'm going to do 1-1. One, one, and to me, that just means uh, row 1, knob 1. Okay. We'll do row 1, knob 2. Because I need that. Let's see what else I need. Okay. I also need 2-1. So, oops. Two one, let's do three one, and we'll do four one and four two, and maybe we'll call it a call it a call it a day there. Four one and four two, okay. So, super quick, super quick. Um, let's click these triple dots. Learn MIDI control. So one one, it knows. Learn MIDI control for two. Oh. Yep, so you got to be careful with these because if you label them wrong. Here we go. Okay. Two, one. Learn this MIDI control. So I'm going to my second knob here. I'll do three, one. Oops. Okay, we'll do 4 1 <clears throat> near in the end here. Learn this MIDI control. And 4 2. Fantastic. So I'm going to click apply. And what this is going to do is it's going to kind of give the information to your gig file. It's also going to recompile any scripts that you have going on. I'm also going to save this. So now gig performer, even though, right, I still have the same exact mappings from before. 
gig performers thinking about the mappings differently. So I want to show you this. When I click on this MIDI or this widget and I look down here next to learn, it's actually no longer giving me a uh, CC number, right? What it's giving me is the number from the rig manager. This is valuable. It's valuable for so many reasons, friends. Um, here's something cool. If I go to one that's not mapped and I know that I want it to be something from my rig manager, there's a little drop down here. I can choose F1, which stands for Fader 1, and now Fader 1 will move it. Very, very cool. All right, fantastic. So we've got all of this set up, and now here, here's the problem. It's a fantastic one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to exit edit mode, and I'm going to unplug this. So now I have no, uh, no real way to access any of those controls anymore. So let's say we actually do find ourselves in a scenario uh, where we're kind of having this issue where like this was all mapped, right? But like, oh no, now I don't have it. So I actually have this other really small keyboard um, and we're going to use it and we're going to see how we can use the rig manager. to really get this up and running. So this is an APK uh, mini, it's a Kai. Um, oh, here, check it out. Tip coming in from Naboja. You can double click on an item in the rig manager. That is amazing, didn't know that. So maybe we'll get to do that in a second here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna open up this rig manager and you'll see Gig Performer is telling me that my launch control is missing. Now, you could remap it. So if, if for example, my key lab was also missing, turn it off. I could say, hey, um, this key lab is now going to be associated with my Akai, and then any MIDI in blocks um, would show up. Actually, I can demo this for you. Let me show you. Let's say, for example, this isn't a MIDI in Omni block. Okay, let's say that maybe you're working with more than one keyboard and you have this set up to be only coming in from my key lab, right? Well, now if that key lab is not there, it is not going to work. So what needs to happen is all of these blocks need to know, hey, whatever was my at-home key lab now has to be my Akai MPK. So pop into the rig manager here. And I'm actually going to create a new rig. And the reason I'm doing this is because perhaps this keyboard, right? For me, this is not a replacement for a full 88 key keyboard, but like you may have, um, you may have more than one setup. You might have a rehearsal setup. You might be using backline gear. And if you're going someplace more than once, rather than relearning these individually, you can say, Hey, um, Every time I come here, I'm going to load in this particular thing. So let's add a new rig, and I'm going to call this a Kai MPK. So Geek Performer right away has told me, hey, I don't know what keyboard to use for this. And I also don't know what to use for this. So I'm going to, for my at-home key lab, let's see, I'm going to double click, check it out. It's amazing. I had some keys. Well, now... Gig Performer knows my Akai is going to be what controls anything that was, at first, my Key Lab notes. So without having to go through and change MIDI blocks individually, you can really go in and, uh, and set this up super fast. So I know David, who's uh, currently on tour with the security project, he has more than one keyboard in his setup and... So when he plugs them in, he needs to tell Gig Performer which one goes to which one. So he's got, I think he has four, but since they're all identical, um, computers see them the same. So he can say bottom, middle, three, four, and just pull them up so he knows his sounds are in the right place, um, which is, is a really fantastic thing to be able to do. So um, 
let's have a little bit of a look at how this works. So fader one, I'm not going to worry too much about, but let's go ahead and map something to button one. So I'm double clicking and I want this to be button one. Well, check it out. Hey, David is here. Here's button two. Here's button three. <clears throat> and button four. Does it work? Well, let's find out. Let's hit apply. Let's save it. Let's flip back over. Looks like it's not actually working. Very interesting. Let's see here. I wonder if I've switched modes. Hey, David, you want to pop in? Amazing. Let me get my face back on here. I'm only here for a moment. We're literally just packed up all my gear and getting ready to go down to Daryl's house. I love it. It's amazing. How are rehearsals going? I'm too old for this. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, what's wrong? What's going on? So let's let's talk about the rig manager. You feel good about it? Well, I use it. I depend on it. All right. So <clears throat> I've got this here going on. Which version of a gig for are you using? The current release, not four point five. Okay. There's an issue with the rig manager in the global rack space in in four in in the which is fixed in four point five. Gotcha. So you gotcha. do it on a regular rack space, not on a global rack space. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, by the way, it works. You just have to quit Gig Performer and open it again. Um, okay. Um, that, so, that's fixed. Fantastic. So let's right, see. So, here. so throw in a block. Not an. I. I need well, a button. Can I see your? Can I see your rig manager? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you've got an at-home key lab, and does yep. that has buttons on it? Yep, four buttons. And so press a key on the on it so I can just see. Yeah, okay, so it's working. So it, it's working. Um, okay. Um, all right, good. So now pu um, push one of the buttons. Okay, so that's that's working too. Yeah, okay, good. So cl close that. It's fine. So now, Great. So now you can do two things. You can learn it or you can just drop down. Uh, yeah, drop down. Yeah, click on that. Boom. Button uh, one. Yeah, you can do it that way. Button two. Yep. Fantastic. Button three. Button four. Yep. And 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 if you now press your buttons, those should. Yeah. Don't forget momentary. Yes. So let's do this though, David. This is this is the money here. The money. <laughs> I know. I'm being affected by my students. All right. Uh, to do this properly, you should generally, most of the time, one should use momentary. Press down, it goes down. Press up, it goes up. Um, and then do everything else from the forward. But okay, what's the issue? So <clears throat> let's go backwards. So I'm going to choose this guy here. And oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. just, it should just work. So I'm going to pull you off the screen for a moment, David. So people can I go can now? I have, I have to. I kind of have to leave. The front of house guy just showed up. Somebody was just at my door. Amazing. Good do, luck. Do you need me? Do you need me at all? Uh, nope. You're all good. Um. All right. Oh, thanks for being here, David. Hey, good luck. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Take care. All right. So, friends, let me get my other my other screen on here so you can see the launch control here. Fantastic. So we're back, right? So we've got these buttons, one, two, three, and four that are all working. And if we flip flop, And we go back into our rig manager.
play. We've got these four buttons. Also, David mentioned the momentary to toggle situation. So Okay. Yep, there we go. All right, so this spread out over the course of multiple keyboards or multiple rigs is going to allow you to not have to worry so much, right? Like anytime I switch devices now, this is just going to work. So, hey, if you're watching right now and you are regularly using the rig manager, um, let us know. Let us know how you're using it. Let us know what you're doing with it. Um, and if you're not a member yet of the community forum, make sure you check that out. But friends, <clears throat> now that we have spent a decent amount of time um, on the rig manager, I want to uh, share with you guys a really exciting thing that is coming up um, with Gig Performer 4.5. And uh, it's all about widgets today, guys. All about widgets. So right now I'm just actually opening... Um, the new version, and here, let me bring it up for you. Okay, so this is the newest version, Gig Performer 4.5, which is going to be released pretty soon, um, and I'm going to show you guys some of the new things that are available in widgets, which <clears throat> I am pretty excited about. So, first things first, this is my personal favorite. When you exit edit mode, if you hold down shift and right click, you get a whole bunch of new uh, features and possibilities. Um, this has just been the thing I didn't know that I wanted. So for example, if you are adjusting this widget and you decide, hey, around seven, I want this to be my max value. Without going back into edit mode, you can right mouse click and choose set as max value. And now your maximum value will be that seven. So fantastic ability to kind of get in there and quickly do it. Now you have the same capability on the lower end of things. So if I go down here and I say, I want this to be my minimum value, I now have my maximum and minimum value. And it is so fast. It is so fast to set up. Um, so if you're excited about this one, let us know. But there's more. So another thing that is really, I, I think this could be really important in some scenarios. We want to have a perhaps a default value, something you can get back to really quickly. Well, it used to be that you would have to go into edit mode and manually set what the default value is, right? It's going to default to zero. But now you can come in here, right mouse click and choose set as default value. So no matter where I move this, if I double click, Gig Performer is going to know to jump back to that particular value. Um, we also have the ability to invert. So up is down and down is up. We also have the ability to show the plugin editor, which let me show you what, what that is. It's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> it's just inserts. Anything here. So perhaps this is mapped to master volume. Right mouse click, show plugin editor, popped up on my other screen, boom. So now if you're looking to see what this parameter is controlling or you need to actually get into um, this editor quickly for some reason, you have that shift right mouse click and you can open it up really quick. Properties will open up the widget properties. This is fantastic. Major, major workflow improvement. So if you've been waiting uh, to upgrade to Gig Performer 4, um, maybe now is the time. We've got some extra things that are coming. We're going to be releasing them slowly um, and eventually making it public very soon. So, okay, there are more things, friends. This one, this one we've been waiting for for a while. So perhaps for some reason, um, <clears throat> you want to not see a widget. Um, it used to not be possible, but now within the general tab, there is a hide button. So if you don't want to see a widget, 
for any reason, when you exit edit mode, all of those widgets will go away. So um, perhaps you are grouping them. I think this is this uh, option. Let's see. Yeah. So these are all now on group A. So if you need widget groups controlling things for something, um, you have that ability. So I don't need to see perhaps all of my other widgets, but I can control them without having to view them. So very exciting update. Oh, tip coming in from Nemanja. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. Shift right or shift left either works. Fantastic to know. Um, so let's test it. Woo. All right. I'm clicking on the wrong thing. There we go. When you're right, you're right. Amazing. Okay. <clears throat> but wait, friends, there is more goodness coming in for these widgets. Um, <clears throat> we now have a couple of different things. Uh, we now have control mode. So if you are working with a controller that perhaps doesn't send absolute, it's got signed bit or, or anything else, right? We've got different control modes that you have access to. Um, but actually what I'm most excited about um, is this follow hardware feature. So let's go in here. I can't remember which, which I have plugged in. Okay. So I'm going to actually map this. to controller, fantastic. And I now have the ability to turn on follow hardware. So this makes it so that you can, in some cases, eliminate the need for uh, a global rack space type thing. So um, I think the easiest way to show this So right now I've got MIDI coming in to contact, <clears throat> going into Okay. So let's say over in my panels, this is actually going to be mapped to my volume. Okay, and maybe I have another rack space. That has um, something similar. But maybe the sound is slightly different. Um, you know, some some element is different enough to make you want to have it in a different rack space. Oops. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to come in here. Let's add another widget. It can be anyone. We'll do this guy. Let's map it to one and two volume. Let's learn it. Okay. And let's turn on follow hardware. So let's make sure that's the same. Yeah. Okay. So what Gig Performer is going to do is Gig Performer is going to be reading from the controller rather than just from a particular um, setting. So here, check this out. I actually can show you on the screen, so might as well do it. Um, okay. So this is my mapped button right here. So you'll see wherever I leave the setting, when I jump to my next rack space, it keeps the same one. So this can be really handy um, <clears throat> if you are dealing with, um, yeah, needing to set levels or trying to not have something just immediately jump um, when you don't want it to. Now we also have this MIDI through, and this is this is kind of cool. So. Um, every once in a while, you might not want what you've mapped to be, um, you know, 
not available to you. So I guess the, my thought is the easiest one is probably like a key, right? So note on here, um, so now you're not going to hear um, any sound because it's mapped. If I check this MIDI through, you're getting the ability to both send MIDI sound as well um, as uh, still have that control going on, um, which <clears throat> can be really handy if you need it for some reason. You don't want to lose that particular parameter. Um, you now have the ability to check MIDI through um, and you are good to go. Um, okay, did I miss anything? see here hiding widgets shift click midi through and the control modes okay friends these are our widget updates i'm going to see if i can bring my face back here so we've talked about the rig manager today we've seen how quick and easy it can be to switch between rigs um, gig performer 4.5 is coming out really uh pretty soon so if you haven't upgraded yet to gig performer 4 do upgrade to gig performer 4 um, if you're a current gig performer 4 license holder um you will get Gig Performer 4.5 absolutely free. Um, David and Naboja both felt that um, just given the situation and the state of the world, if, if you've upgraded to 4, you should get 4.5 uh, at no extra cost. Um, so make sure you've got that 4 license. Um, next week, we will be back and we will be building a set list, a complete set list in one episode, utilizing favorites, utilizing pre-made panels to really just go from zero to ready to go in one hour. Um, friends, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you hit that like button to help more people find out about Gig Performer. And uh, I will see you guys next Thursday uh, at the same time. Thank you, friends, for being here.